So this is a wonderful story. And I actually read this story to myself a lot because it holds within it the secret to health, healing, your own happiness, and your own success in the world. And just to uh, clarify, one of the footnotes here in the book says, God-united masters are fully able to transfer their divine realizations to advanced disciples, as Lahiri Mahasaya did for Sri Yukteswar on this occasion. Okay, let me read that again. Pay attention. God-united masters are fully able to transfer their divine realizations to advanced disciples, as Lahiri Mahasaya did for Sri Yukteswar on this occasion. And that's why the work you do on your own through meditation practice, through yoga, helps you be more in tune to the goodness of life, the wholeness of life, the grace within life. In Seven Lessons in Conscious Living, um, my teacher's book, Roy Eugene Davis, he mentioned in a chapter that very rarely did he ever meet someone who had financial difficulties or a poverty consciousness that demonstrated true spiritual awakening. And he goes on to say the reason this is the case is because if a person is doing their yoga practice correctly, waking up, paying attention, they will be more attuned to, more receptive of the divine grace which is always flowing to you. The idea that you have to do something to be good enough to receive divine grace that's a fallacy. You don't have to do anything to receive divine grace. All you have to do is to be open to it. You don't have to be deserving of it. You don't have to do anything spectacular. Think of all the stories, if you can, of, uh, of people who, who led terrible lives, but all of a sudden had a conversion experience and then led a very good life, and the blessings came to them in that way. They're not, they weren't thinking to themselves, I have to repay all this karma, all this debt that I've accumulated. They just had a shift in viewpoint, and they let go of that debt. They let go of that imagination that they had all of this debt. The karma that you think you have, you have it because you think you have it. That's the difference between a self-realized person and a person um, who's not awake, is that the self-realized person knows who and what they are, and they know their inner freedom. The unrealized person, they are still a divine manifestation of God and the infinite, just as we all are. The, the difference is they don't know it. They don't accept it as real. And that's why they're caught up in the dream delusion. In your mind, in your head, purge those thoughts. Fast from those thoughts that you are not deserving of good fortune. Fast from those thoughts that says you are not deserving of good health. And one way you can do that, this is, this is great, and it does take a bit of um, ability to be detached and watchful. And again, that's why meditation is so helpful, because it teaches you to do that, to pull back, and be able to observe the changes within your consciousness. If you say to yourself, if you think about something you want, and let's just take, uh, let's just take a common one, um, money. If you think you need more money or you want more money, and you say to yourself, you're praying, God, I would like to, I would like to have more money to pay my bills, to uh, you know, pay off my credit cards, to go on vacation and whatnot. If when you think that, and you claim it within your consciousness, quietly, Pay attention to all of the other thoughts that come up underneath of it. They're very subtle, and they're, they're like the subconscious conditioning there. You might start noticing that what you're hearing is, oh, but I don't necessarily want to work that much. Oh, but I don't want to have to pay that much taxes. Oh, but, you know, whatever it might be, there'll be all these old buts underneath of it. But you have to be really perceptive to hear them and see them. Let's take spiritual growth. I want to be self-realized. I want to be... God realized, I want to be cosmic consciousness, I want to know what the masters know, I want to be one of them. You put that out there and you start saying it, you start affirming it to yourself, really feeling it. But underneath you hear, oh, but you might have to get rid of a few of your friends. Oh, but you might have to start eating differently. Oh, but you might have to start not feeling so bad about yourself all the time. Oh, you might have to actually love your neighbor and yourself. All these things are deep underneath it there. And if you can, if you can pay attention, you will hear them and they will give you an indication of that karma that's beneath the surface that you need to give up, that you need to purge. And so again, what do you do? You just start purging it. Once it's there, you admit to yourself, I know this is, within, this is within me, but I'm no longer going to sustain those states of consciousness. I'm no longer going to hold within me that structure. I'm no longer going to hold it within me. And in time, 
it will be gone and you will be able to live the life you want to live. But that's how you do it. You fast on a mental, spiritual, on a psychological level really. That is what's most important. And I even stress this over physical fasting. And you'll read it in the, um, you'll read it in the bulletin there. Think about how many people, and I've been involved in the alternative health community for about nine years. And so I've met a lot of people in that field, um, both at classes, working with them, well-meaning people, all these sorts of things. But I, don't, I can't tell you how many of them I've met who are always, well, I need to do this herbal cleanse, or I need to do this fast, or I need to do this one thing to make me feel better or whatnot. But there's always something else they need to do. And I don't mean that in the sense that there actually is always something else they need to do. I mean that in their mind, there will always be something else they need to do because they're not willing to accept in their thoughts that, they can, that they're just fine. They're just fine. The body knows how to heal itself. If you exercise, if you give it unprocessed foods, um, not a lot of additives, if you give it just wholesome foods, it'll do what it needs to do. Now think about all those people who've actually done that. They've gotten their exercise. Um, they've, they've cleaned up their diet. Um, but then they die of a heart attack at, you know, 50. Or, <laughs> well, I, I've, I've known a few people like that. You know, they, they take care of themselves. What is the thing they've not changed? They've not changed what's up here. Roy Eugene Davis, my teacher, he's, always, he's a very big proponent of living a, a very long life, living a good, long, productive life. And, you know, in, in Ayurveda and Vedic astrology, we're supposed to be able to live right now in this age to 120 happy and healthily, f fully able to do things and be active and think right. And, um, you know, I, for a while I'd always think, why is, why is he such a big proponent of, of long life? I mean, you know, like, who wants to hang around here? You know, that, that's, what would be, that's what would be in my mind. <clears throat> but you see, that thought that I had in my mind, that was an indication that I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> because if you're awake, it doesn't matter if you're here or you're somewhere else. If you're awake, it doesn't matter. But the reason he encourages nice, long, healthy life is so that a person has time to get there. Because this is where you're working it out, right here. And, and now I understand. And that's why, for example, Yogananda or Ramana Maharshi, you know, there's a lot of people that uh, checked out young. Once you have it figured out, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. But you have to figure it out first. And a healthy body and a healthy mind will contribute to that. But also, on the flip side, Spiritual awareness will contribute to a healthy body and a healthy mind. So you see it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Going back to when we see people who, who, who die young and they've tried to do everything to take care of themselves but they still check out early, it's because they don't have it up here. They don't have it right in their head. The ability that they can be happy, they can be healthy. Because you can do every good thing you want in the world, but if in your mind you still think that you've got something going wrong with your body, you're going to still have something going wrong with your body. Yeah. Um, there, I think one of the things that happens sometimes in, I hate to use the word new age thought, is that people are um, vilified if they die of cancer because they haven't done the things that you're saying. Right. Whereas sometimes there's a bigger plan. Right. Whatever. Well, that's possible. And I don't want you to think I'm going to vilify anyone who dies of cancer mm -hmm. because they don't get it. Because again, you're right, there is a path there. But what I'm encouraging you to do is not think that way. Um, but genetics, that's a good point. You know, studies have found that I believe it's uh, thirty percent. Like the experiences you have in life, your physical health, thirty percent is genetics. The other seventy percent is diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. 